picking up from our last movie on lens effects. Let's layer another lens effect element, a star. So we'll have a proper lens flare and also map that star, adding some noise or grain in order to break it up. I've got a render region selected. We can see it as a box in the viewport. Let's open up the rendered frame window. And there's my rendered frame from the last movie. And I'm rendering just that region. Let's now go into the rendering menu and open up our effects dialog. And we've got our lens effects listed here. Select it and that will reveal its parameters here. We want to be in interactive mode. So if you're not, go ahead and turn that on and then that region will re-render. Once that render has updated, now we can add another element to our lens effects. Over here, we've got a star element. Select that and click the right-facing arrow to send it over into the rightmost pane and make it active. Scroll down. We've already got a lens effects global size of 10 here, and that applies to the star and the glow. Let's minimize that and go into the options. Once again, we need to determine what part of the scene will trigger the star element. And our options for a star are lights and image centers. But I want to warn you, image centers can be dangerous. With certain settings, if you enable image centers, then 3ds Max will go into an endless processing loop because it's trying to kick off a star on lots and lots of pixels in the scene maybe even every pixel in the scene. And in that situation, you have no choice but to kill the 3ds Max process from the task manager. So be careful about this image centers. I'm going to enable it. And the interactive rendering updates, but we won't get any star just yet because nothing has been enabled over here. Once that render has updated, now we can go and set up our image filters. We want the bright value to be 255 once again. And it's important that we enter in the value first. So enter in the value of 255 and then enable bright. And now when we assign an object ID, only the brightest pixels will kick off a star. And if it had been at all, then we would have gone into that endless processing loop. So it's important that I did this first. All right, so enable object ID and the dome already has an object ID of one. We set that in the previous movie and we've got our star. Cool, so let's go into the parameters and just fine tune this. Bring the size down, 40. And the intensity over here, let's make that 12. And we're of course observing the results here. Width, I'll make it 10. The angle, We'll tilt it 37 degrees, and now it's turned. Tapering, I'll set that to zero. And then sharp, value of 10. And quantity is the number of rays. We can increase that, you can see what it does. I prefer it at its default value of six. We've got a pure white color here, and that's because use source color is set to 100 here meaning that the white pixels in the reflection are generating white stars. I'll bring that down to a value of zero, and that will allow me to set the color of the star independently. So set source color to zero, and immediately it turned blue over here because it's now using this color in the radial color section. Click on that and set the hue to 23, and we can play around with saturation and value. We see what that does over here. I'll bring the saturation down to about 50 and leave the value at 255. So I've just tinted it ever so slightly orange. And finally, we can add a map to break it up and make it less uniform. Go to the options and under additional effects, we can add a map. Click the button labeled none. And from the material map browser, choose noise. Double click on noise. It's now added. We don't see much change over here. We need to change up the noise parameters. So let's open up the material editor. Material editor. And then use middle mouse to clear up some space in the material editor. 
and then drag the noise map over from environment and effects into the material editor view. Choose instance, double click on that noise map and rename it immediately. Call it lens effects noise. Lens effects is still in an interactive mode. So we can go ahead and change some parameters of the noise so that we can see what's going on. Let's set the size of the noise to a value of one and then set the coordinates X tiling to 15 and take a look in our interactive rendering. What's happening is the same noise pattern is being applied onto each arm of the star. And that's why we're getting these sort of repeating patterns. But all I really want here is some grain. I can accomplish that pretty easily just by bringing the size down to 0.1. And now it's very grainy and we can soften that up using the blur offset. That's going to blur everything. So let's set that to 0.5. So now we've got some grain there and we can control the amount of grain using blur offset at 0.1. It's pretty grainy there, pretty evident. And I could even zoom in actually in this render view using the wheel, get in real close on that. And we've got our blur offset. 0.2, it's a little bit softer, 0.5. And we're in a pretty good place now because we've added some grain, but it's not really evident. It doesn't really call attention to itself. All right, our lens flare is set up and we're ready now to re-render our full frame. I'll close this window, right click on the title bar and choose close. Really close everything. We can close the dome group up again, select that group and close it. Group close. Unhide the geometry in the layer explorer. Layer explorer. Enable the ground and the terrain. Go back into our render setup. Back into global illumination and re-enable final gather. And we've got in the common tab, once again, a render resolution of 1360 by 768. And in the renderer tab, let's set our final samples per pixel quality to one. And so that we don't just render a region, we can go back into the common tab and choose area to render view. And we're rendering physical camera 001. And click render to execute the final production rendering. If you get any error messages, don't worry too much about it. We're seeing this because we switched over to the integer 16 bit per channel frame buffer mode. We can close the error message window and watch our render complete. Here's a final rendering of our layered lens effects, including a glow element and a star element that has additionally been mapped with noise. That's an introduction to lens effects. It concludes our chapter on studio lighting and special effects and also wraps up the course on 3ds Max Advanced Lighting.